Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is a little bit of a special episode because it's a Pens on the Road, Jamestown. Which, by the way, would explain why I haven't uploaded any videos this week. Because I stayed in a motel with horribly slow internet. Uh, I knew I was in trouble because I keep all my video footage on the cl in the cloud. Uh, I knew I was in trouble when it said 12 hours to download the footage. <laughs> And it took a lot longer than that, and didn't really finish till I got home, and then zoop! And I don't even have the fast internet at home, so yeah, that was an experience. And uh, watching YouTube videos was an experience too, so uh, got some reading done, so I guess that's all good. So, let's dive into the pens. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, uh, what do you think of Jamestown? Should I retire there? Let me, let me know in the comments down below. So let's take a look at what I have. Did you ever get into an enthusiastic discussion of pens that you've been using all week, only to discover that you never turned on the camera? So we will try that again. Uh, from left to right. Uh, first five pens are the ones that went with me to Jamestown. The first one is a Caveco V14S with black ink in it. Uh, this is my writer pen for the first day. Beside it, a Schaefer Imperial 2 Deluxe, which was my writer pen for the second day. It had a blue ink in it. Uh, kind of my highlight slash standout slash personal note pen. In my notes, uh, Schaefer, Snorkel, Schaefer Snorkel Clipper with red ink in it. And since the Schaefer Imperial 2 Deluxe did run out of ink, the Aurora 88 Vintage filled in with uh, Califolio Equinox, so that was blue enough. And never used but did come with me was a Platinum 3776 with a highlighter type ink in it. It just didn't fit in with what I was doing this time. And then just to round it out, I thought I'd show off a couple of the more interesting oops. I thought just to round it off, I thought I'd show off a couple of the more interesting members of what was going to be my giveaway. I have a Reform 4328, a Senator Regent, I did a first impression of one like this just recently, except that one was blue. Uh, I think, if, is that, well, I own a Reform 4328, another one that, that looks exactly like this one. A Buehler, I don't know, I call it red and tan. Uh, this has an extra fine nib, the other one's got a fine nib. Uh, I'm keeping the other one, this one was going to be my giveaway, it writes quite well. And finally, a Twisby 580 aluminum. And the interesting thing with that, uh, Goul I think it was Goulet just did something about the different Twisby 580s. Uh, and uh, this is an orange and apparently somewhat of a collector's item, which I didn't know when I was thinking about giving it away. But whatever, I never write with it, which is why I was looking at giving them away. So I'm, I do have some ideas. I uh, actually am in have a few pen pals I think would enjoy some of these pens so that's what I'm going to look at doing. As always I'll be writing this in my BOMO art journal. Oops. As always I'll be writing this in my BOMO art journal. I uh, just placed an order for two more of these so uh, by the time I get through this one I should have replacements ready. Uh, they don't they actually do still have the seafood flavored cover but uh, some of the other covers, you know, they've changed a bit. So, again, I got one like this and another one that didn't have the fabric binding. So, uh, that'll be fun when they get here. Take a look at them. It should be the same paper, but, uh, yeah, the Bomo Art Journal for this show is going to continue. Uh, the first pen out of this is an excellent note-taking pen. It's a Caveco V14S. Uh, the reason I like it, it just writes a very fine line. And the ink, even though it's a slim pen, the ink just seems to last forever. And indeed it did. Uh, my note taking, you know, I ended up taking 
uh, let's see here. 12 pages of notes. Where's my 12? There it is. So, uh, and it hasn't run out yet. Uh, holding it this way, I don't even see ink, or holding it nibbed down, I don't even see ink in the ink window, or uh, air in the ink window. I do see it when I hold it upside down. So I may actually be starting school with this pen. And usually I switch to my Lamy 2000. But I have a lot more occasion to use this pen with school starting, so, you know, I think we'll be running through it fairly quickly. Oops. No, yes, that's right. Sorry. Got myself confused there for a second. 4001. Brilliant black. I don't know how black can be brilliant, but whatever. It's a nice version of black. We'll do this and help it run out of ink, right? Now, the second day, just kind of so visually I could tell the two days apart, um, this, I used a blue ink, which was in the Schaefer Imperial Deluxe. Now, it ran dry, so I kind of doubt it's going to write here, but we'll see. Oh! Maybe there will be enough here. And this, the ink in it was Schaefer. You wasted this ink on that? Vintage, so the old version, script. Blue number two. No, 42. It's red number two. You know, it's kind of a... Now I'm wondering how much ink is actually in here. But it... it oh, yeah. Thought so. So, it had just enough for me to finish that. It must have eased its way down from the sack into the feed. And we are done with that. So I'll be washing that pen out. But I'm glad you got to see it writing, because I was going to have to whip this out and prove to you that... The next 11 pages were taken with, with that ink. I need to do something with my notes yet, uh, process them somehow, and I haven't done that, but uh, with school starting, I need to do it, I just need to find the time to do it, but I also want to get school started, and kind of wasted today, but anyway. Uh, the next pen was going to be last week's review, but like I said, Getting the footage off the cloud to my computer was a no-go, and I'm pretty sure uploading the same footage would have been a no-go. So, that's something you can look forward to next week. So, this is a Schaefer Snorkel Clipper. With a fine nib. Triumph nib, of course with a snorkel. I mean, what would be the fun if it didn't have a snorkel? Uh, and again, Schaefer. So I had a viewer that sent me some samples, which I'm very thankful for. Vintage. Scrip. Red. Number two. And I'm told that the modern Schaefer ink is a lot more saturated than these two examples. It does kind of make me wonder, you know, back whenever this ink was made, because I don't know the age of this sample, would it have looked this washed out, or would it have been as uh, intense as modern, you know? Is it faded because of age? And I don't know the answer to that. So, when the uh, Imperial Deluxe ran out of ink, 
I switched to a pen that I really enjoy. Oops. This is an Aurora 88 vintage version. That was my fault that it skipped there. Uh, the ink in it is Califolio. I'm not sure what Equinox has to do with a blue-black color. You know, Equinox I always think of is when the you have equal 12 hours of day, 12 hours of dark, but what do I know? And the pen that didn't get used, but I brought along thinking I might need a highlighter. Platinum 3776. This is the special edition with the Sheng Yo finish. Uh, they actually came out with some very nice special editions this year. I wasn't too interested. I don't know why I brought it with me to be a highlighter. I mean, obviously it wasn't going to last too long, but... Whatever. Another one to rinse out. Uh, this has the nice double broad, which Platinum calls the core snib. And the ink is Rohrer and Klingner. Eh, I'm not going to have room here, it's writing so big. Helianthus. Maybe. has been nice since I've been back. It's been cooler. I haven't needed... In fact, I'm wearing jeans right now. You probably can hear that the windows are open. Because it's not that cool yet, but... You know, we'll, we'll heat up again. That's just kind of a thing that happens here, but... For now... I'm enjoying the cooler weather. Now, upcoming... Or not upcoming... I had planned to do a giveaway... Uh, this is one of the pens that was going to be on it. I have two of these, and I thought, especially this one I picked up for quite a low price, um, I thought, why don't I give the one I got for a low price away? But, for reasons that I explained last week, that's not to be. I have wondered, you know, is the cap quite the right cap for the pen? Uh, my other one doesn't have the rubbing up here like this one does, but I have no idea. So, you can tell this was going to be a pretty nice thing to give away. I don't know what size the nib is, but it's a gold nib. It's one of those vintage Bach nibs that I highly recommend. And the ink in it, which I was trying to use up, and I am darn close. Whoops, M-O-N-T. Mon Blanc. Black. Don't ask me which type of black it is. Uh, last time I used this ink, I was asked that. It just says black on the bottle. It's the shoe-shaped bottle. Um, and I am not conversant with their world of inks. I don't know if they're good inks or bad inks. There are apparently several versions of black in their world, though. So, another brand besides Schaefer that a lot of people use, but other than this bottle, I do not use. I did a first impression of the... In fact, uh, you, you can see all, links to all the videos in the video description down below. I did a first impression of a blue version of this pen. Uh, this pen actually, you know, I inked it up, but I was doing a lot of writing with this pen. I just like it. And of course the other one, when it was inked up, I was using a lot. So this is a Senator Regent. Uh, 
Uh, nib size is a medium. And again, bon bon. And I won't repeat my whole discussion about I don't know what kind of black it is. And as you can guess, the all these pens are going to be writing in black. So those of you who come here for the exciting inks, um, sorry. Buehler, red and tan. I don't know its model. It's a cute little thing, though. I, I liked the jade one. In fact, I thought I was just buying the jade one when I bought this. But I got two pens. So, that's why I decided to give away this one. I like, I wanted the jade one. And uh, this one, actually this one writes a little better, which makes it kind of weird that I'm giving this one away, but I wanted that jade. Buehler, uh, red and tan. Not quite as flexible as that reform. Which is fine. And again, this very same ink. Of course, if you're going to write like this, you need to have a nice feed to help you keep up. I'll just mention uh, that Senator actually had a big ink starvation problem. And I don't recommend this, this Senator. Uh, I don't recommend this as a way to uh, repair pens. But I set it down and it fell onto the floor. And after that, the ink starvation problem was gone. So whatever works. They said I started writing with a lot after that. Uh, this one is a Twisby. 580 aluminum the uh, whatever their first orange one was because I know they came out with another orange later on yeah let's actually get this on screen and again mobile black so those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week more or less. I'm just checking the time there to see if I need to restart that camera. Um, I will be starting school next week. I remember last year and possibly the year before I was losing my voice by the time I was supposed to film pens in use. So I'm going to be smart this year and I'm going to film pens in use ahead of time. So probably this coming weekend. And then I'll just have it ready to upload whether I still have a voice or not. We'll have our first football game on Saturday so uh, I'll be photographing that. And yeah, time to get back to real life, I guess. So um, I went to Jamestown this week. Uh, that, as I said at the beginning of the video, that's why you didn't get any videos this week because sad to say the internet was super slow at the motel I stayed at. I uh, couldn't get my raw footage because it's all on the cloud because I don't need it clogging up my hard drive. Uh, I, my footage was all uh, just so slow to download and I didn't get it downloaded that whole time I was there so no videos I will do both of those next week uh, so look forward to what was it a Senator 210 and a Schaefer snorkel 
Yeah, the red one you saw this week. Uh, you can also look forward to as an upcoming video. I usually don't buy pens in the summer, but it's close enough to my first paycheck, September 20th. Um, you know, I knew how much money I had in the bank. I'm like, okay, you've got breathing room. So I did purchase a Senator Legacy 2, which, uh, oh, it's not over here. Uh, but it, it's, uh, I wouldn't call it vintage, although some do, but they were sold in the 1990s. Uh, I, Schaefer was celebrating something. Well, you'll see the box. Oh, I don't have the box over here either. <laughs> You'll see the box in the video. Um, ginormous box. It's the first uh, pen where I've really had... How do I do that? i got to look at my face to get on the right side. Where I had to hold the box up like this so you could see all the packaging because it just didn't fit underneath B camera here. Um, and yeah, it fills with a touchdown filler just like the... Uh, the... Uh, uh, doggone... I'll edit that out. It fills up, uh, it fills with the touchdown filler just like this Snorkel and this Imperial Deluxe. Uh, not with a Snorkel, mind you, and uh, not as well because it's, it's a converter. And you can take it out. So what happens is it takes about two pumps and it still doesn't get quite as full as that Imperial 2 Deluxe did. So, uh writes really well so i do look forward to sharing it with you uh, other than that uh, i was in jamestown for the governor's summit on innovative education this was a longer summit this year uh, one of the days we talked about you know just innovation in education different teaching methods and so on uh, the other day we talked a whole day on behavioral health now behavioral health if you're whether you're in the education world or not, is getting to be more of a thing that is popping up on people's radar. It is, it is impacting us in the classroom. And it really has long-term ramifications. Like if we can help kids who have some kind of a behavioral or mental issue in the right way, not necessarily in the traditional way because i know you tell talk to some of the old teachers about this and they're why don't you just whoop them like we did back when i was teaching you know i i'm gonna restart this real quick i'm about to go off on a little tear so i thought i better restart this camera so it doesn't shut off right in the middle of my little tear um i don't know how it is in other countries we had a gentleman speak from tanzania um and of course where he went to school Kids were hit with switches and stuff. Uh, when I started elementary school, our teachers paddled. Uh, I was never paddled, but uh, they paddled. By the time I got to high school, that had become not the thing to do in Pennsylvania. But all the old teachers kept their paddles up on the board. You know, even high school teachers must have paddled back then. Uh, our My biology teacher had a paddle, and he, he would make every one he paddled sign it so... There's this paddle hanging on his wall with signatures all over it. I am so glad I didn't teach in that world because that's just so dehumanizing. And bad enough with a little kid, you know, as an adult, oh my God, or, or a teenager. Uh, and, and I know that attitude is out there that, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. But what behavioral science has shown us and it's not always applied correctly, which is where people get misled. A lot of behavior problems aren't because... I have a train nearby. <laughs> if, not coming down the street, because if that ever happens, we're in big trouble. It's a couple blocks, the tracks are a few blocks over. Um, sorry, with all the windows open, it's very clear. I know you heard it. Anyway, <laughs> sounded like it was coming up the street, though, for a second. Um, when the wind's... When the air is just right, like it's very still tonight, you can hear it. But wow, rambling. Okay, um, but anyway, what what they're missing? It, it's just like you get a kid who's maybe in third grade and doesn't know how to read yet. It's not that it's a lazy kid. It's the kid doesn't know how to read. So what do you do? You teach him to read. Uh, there's adults that don't know how to read that have to be taught to read. It's not necessarily a willful decision. So that's the same thing with behavior. For whatever reason, and there's lots of different reasons, genetic, background, 
uh, parents, uh, other things in the environment. The kid does not know correct behavior and has to be taught that correct behavior. Uh, and what they've been finding is traditional school discipline, like paddling, doesn't work. Uh, it may get forced compliance for a while, till they think they can get away with it. Um, you know, I don't see... Yes, I'm the authority in the classroom, but I don't like that whole, I've got the power over you and you will do what I say. That's a just a gross way of relating to people. Uh, here, here in North Dakota, our prison system has undergone a massive reform. Uh, we're not quite to the Norwegian model yet, but we're working that way. You know, treating prisoners not as animals or people to be punished, but as our future neighbors, because most of them will be getting out of prison eventually. And no, North Dakota does not have the death penalty. One of the good things about this state that I like very much uh, but, you know, North Dakota has really worked hard to reform its prison system. And, you know, kind of controversial in some circles. You've got that old school mentality of prisons about revenge or punishment. Uh, no, I, I, I want these people who get out of jail to go on to lead productive lives because they've learned better skills. And, and that's why I'm not opposed to prisons having classes and so on some people think you know you're coddling them and you know, cheap out on the prison and hope, hope they get butt whomped in prison and all that stuff no i am <laughs> not going to use the the word there i don't want youtube's algorithm to catch me uh but you know, just kind of awful old school and and no prison should be about yes there's the punishment you know you uh steal something is not as bad as some other crimes or stealing something big uh, you know you definitely need different levels but th besides the punishment the biggest component is when they get out how can we have them ready to be your neighbor your colleague at work possibly your employee and so yeah I've been very happy that North Dakota is doing that but <laughs> that was a little tear I wasn't planning on when I planned this video out my real tear I was going to go on about was Jamestown so I'm going to switch now to some footage of Jamestown. I'll narrate a bit and we'll close this puppy out. So I apologize. When I was recording the audio or well the video earlier, I didn't realize that the gain turned way up on this microphone. So yeah, you heard a lot of chair squeaks and other noises that you shouldn't hear, but uh, I've got it turned down now. Uh, Jamestown's down in a valley. I, uh, looks forested but it isn't and uh like a lot of towns all over the united states jamestown has a big outlying business area that it's hard to walk this is not a town that's pedestrian friendly parts of it are but the town as a whole is not you know and that's just united states our towns are built for cars. Sad, but true. So here I am driving down Main Street, Jamestown. I showed you their weird little intersection to get into Main Street. I don't like it. But, uh, you know, you see all these modern buildings, you just think, oh, God. And on the God comment, there's a Catholic church. But anyway, uh, Jamestown has all that modern architecture and you just think ew but it has a more historic downtown but it brings up a good point why aren't we building modern buildings they look welcoming and interesting uh, I appreciate that Jamestown has a grocery store right on Main Street there it is uh, wish my town still did and here, as I pull up behind this pickup that stopped at the stoplight, you can start to see that Jamestown does have a nice downtown. Now, I will concede that the buildings are everything, but a lot of these buildings were occupied, which was part of what made this cool. 
I, I'm going to take you walking around downtown in a little bit. But, yes, Jamestown, town of about 17,000 people, has a very thriving downtown. I couldn't help but think, this is the kind of town I could retire to. Off to your left there, you can see Hanson Arts Park. Uh, that will play into the story momentarily. I, had a, I was invited to the governor's reception at the educational summit. And that was held at the park there. Uh, I uh, don't know if there's any kind of security around, but it's North Dakota, so he was probably pretty safe. Um, and here we cross the railroad tracks, which there's no way to make them attractive. And a little bit more Main Street. And then we turn toward the high school. Now, I found the high school on Google Maps. Google, sorry, mispronounced that, I apologize. And I didn't know really the best way to get there. As I learned later, wasn't the way I drove, but... I didn't know any better, so I just kind of did my thing. I followed the giant red vehicle here. And actually I'm glad I did, because I got to see Jamestown has some very nice neighborhoods. It also has, see that white building to your right? That's the Jamestown Civic Center. We have an equivalent thing in where I live. It's called the Four Seasons. It's, it's a large space that's good for large gatherings. And, uh, yeah, the street, I didn't, I, I've edited, I've edited the video a little bit. Uh, God, I'm tired. See, I should have done this first before I filmed my pens and use. Uh, but. I edited a lot of the stop signs and stop lights so you didn't have to watch the whole thing. And honestly, you're not going to watch the whole trip out to the high school either because it's out there. But uh, I just looked at this and said, wow. And by the way, the soil in Jamestown is black. I wish my soil was black because they have amazing soil for gardens. That's one of the reasons I've talked about, why don't I retire here? Because I think I could. They've got an amazing main street. They've got amazing soil. I could garden. Hell, I could even, if I need the money, I could even substitute teach at their amazing new high school. It's just a very, very nice town. And, uh, you know, as you get older, you deal with health issues and whatever. Well, where I live... I'm driving a minimum of three hours for those health issues. Jamestown can deal with the minor ones. And either way, there's Bismarck and Fargo. By the way, on the left, that brick wall is around the football field at the college. Yes, Jamestown University is a Presbyterian college in Jamestown. And, of course, Presbyterian, even though it's a christian university it's not one of the crazy ones so uh that's good and here we are just as i thought oh my god i got lost there's the high school right on the outskirts of town and it's a very new high school i won't say it's as amazing as legacy high school in bismarck but it's good uh, the entrance that i'm pulling up to opens into a big commons area kind of a think cafeteria because yeah there's a cafeteria oops sorry kicked the microphone uh there's a cafeteria there but there's also opening off of that a theater music department media center gymnasium uh, just a very good use of space you know, they planned it out all ahead. I teach in a building which, don't get me wrong, is a very nice building. But it has been cobbled together over 50 years. So things are not laid out efficiently. But good, good place. So the governor held his reception at the Hanson Arts Park. Uh, this is related to a really cool art gallery. 
Uh, and you can see the art all over. You can see the soil in the growth of the plants because mine don't look like that. Very amazing art. Uh, I love those tiled benches. I can't help but think my little town needs something like this. I got to figure out how to do it. But yeah, there's uh, the people at the time I took the footage at the reception. Uh, more of the benches. And uh, just really cool. There's the governor's car. Can you guess which one it is? And then I went into the art gallery. Nobody was there. It blew my mind. I was there on my own. But kind of cool. I, I enjoyed looking at all the art. There's some bison. And then I uh, started touring the main street. And uh, looked up and down and wandered around a little and walked and Jamestown has a lot of cool businesses uh, this one just caught my eye I just thought the writer in me just thought what about that person that lives down there in that basement apartment and I'm just thinking three days of the condor with Robert Redford or the book six days of the condor uh, post office and courthouse but anyway that that lady lived down the basement apartment uh, here is, I don't know. Oh, that was the same building. Sorry. Jamestown does have its new buildings. There's the library, which is, whoa. I want to go inside that. And yeah, Louis L'Amour started out in Jamestown, North Dakota. So if you like Western fiction, there you go. Presbyterian Church. Uh, I, if you know me... I always was going to a small church my whole life. I've always wondered what a bigger church like this would be. And yet it's not a mega church. Here's the Methodist church. Same thing. What's it like? I don't know. Uh, here, Here's Main Street again. Some businesses. And uh, I'm just taken by all these old buildings. Actually, I guess this is a spur off of Main Street. I apologize. There is the Maple Mall, a very cool business. There is a mall in Jamestown, but this is a bunch of really small businesses right on Main Street. Here I am headed back close to the Hanson Arts Park, and I feel like I've seen this part of the footage before. Anyway, a spur off of Main Street. I don't know. And then, you know, there's Railroad, and this was much cooler in person than the camera shows. You could really see the train tracks, and there's some cool art. So yeah, I love Jamestown. So I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed my impromptu little tear there. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed uh, footage of Jamestown. Not the largest city in North Dakota, but a big one. And... Uh, you know, it's the Buffalo City, although, as our governor pointed out, because, uh, yes, it was the governor's summit, so our governor pointed out that it actually should be called the Bison City, and he had a photograph during his talk of a water buffalo and a bison. Everybody calls them buffalo, including me, but apparently the correct term, correct term for them, the animals that run around the Great Plains, is bison. Uh, I will also say North Dakota is probably one of the few states where your governor is going to talk about driving down the highway, getting a bee splattered on the windshield, and he, he claims, I have not tested this and I don't know if I ever will, <laughs> but you know if you've ever splattered a bee on your windshield, you know that they're clear. Other bugs leave like green splats or brown splats, or if it's a mosquito, red splats, if it's had a little snack. But the bees leave a clear splat, and he claims that that's nectar. He says you can have a lot of fun, go out, dip your finger in the clear splat and taste it, it should be sweet. <laughs> I don't know uh, if many governors would make that claim, but uh, I guess that makes North Dakota <laughs> unique. Uh, this is a guy who was a big high-powered uh, Microsoft guy a few years ago. So, if uh, videos like this interest you, or I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about licking bug splats off windshields, I would invite you to subscribe. And uh, 
hope you enjoyed this vision of Jamestown. Uh, what do you think? I think it's kind of a cool town. Um, kind of place maybe I could retire to. Who knows? But I uh, want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.